Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on my channel. Uh, this video is going to be of an introduction to a species that um, not many people have actually heard about, as uh, you probably have read in the title. This video is about Leptothorax, specifically this species here, Leptothorax canadensis. Now, Leptothorax canadensis is a species that not many people have actually kept. Uh, this is mostly due to the fact that they are really difficult to find. Queens, normally uh, when I find some queens, very rarely do I find queens, but when I do find queens, normally I find them in the months of July or even June, but ju just because of how small they are and the time that they fly, which is around about midday, it makes it incredibly difficult to acquire a queen. This species prefers to live inside of hollow pieces of grass or even hollow wood. Uh, they are not very common to be nesting in actual wood, but rather like wooden reeds, which is what I collected this uh, two queen colony from. Uh, it was by complete accident, by the way. I was busy making a setup for my Pseudomermix chrysalis that are coming in soon. And it just so happened that I ended up uh, breaking open one of the reeds inside of my house and ended up actually collecting this colony here. This species is an extremely cold-loving species, or rather, cold-resistant species. They can find it be found all the way up in northern Canada, and all the way down to the mountains in California, Arizona, and other places like that. Their extreme cold resistance makes it so that they are one of the two species that can actually survive within the Nearctic tundras of Canada. Not only that, but they are also a semi-claustral species, which means that the queens actually have to go out and hunt for their own food. Lepdothorax are pretty much just cold-resistant, semi-claustral founding temnothorax, which is honestly kind of cool. Colonies of the species don't exactly get the biggest. Uh, colonies normally- what in the world is that worker doing? She's like backing up constantly. <laughs> Anyways. Colonies of this species normally don't get that big, uh, normally within only the couple hundred workers range, but queens, due to them being very polygynous, uh, you can get pretty big colonies eventually. Like, I know someone used to have a 15 queen colony of the species, and they got them to around a couple hundred workers, but normally colonies stay within the 100-200 range of uh, workers. One thing that you may have also noticed is that the queens are literally the size of their mature workers. Uh, some of these workers in this colony are still netedics, but the one uh, actual worker, which is in between the two queens right now, is literally the same size as the uh, queens themselves. Uh, I do not know exactly the size of these ants, but I'm guessing it's only around about a few millimeters. They're around about the size of a uh, tetramorium, and I don't know, it's just insane how, like, you can't really tell the queens apart besides from the hump on their back, and that's it. Because otherwise, the gaster size is pretty much the same, the head size is the same, it's just that they have the wing muscles, and that's it. Many of these colonies uh, are just coming out of hibernation. Many of the colonies that I'm finding are all founding, uh, like this colony here. This is a way smaller colony. Uh, this is only one queen. This was the first colony I found when I was out in the field trying to collect the reeds for my uh, Pseudomermex setup. Uh, and it was just, it was a one queen colony with a few workers and some larvae, and I'm hoping to grow these guys out eventually. I am also going to be trying to breed Leptothorax. I'm planning on going out and collecting around about two or three more colonies. Then I will go ahead and grow them out to maturity, and then I will put them inside of some setups to see if they actually end up flying, and uh, you know mating, or eventually even maybe they might. Uh, mate in the nest. I know the one guy who had the 15 queen colony actually had his colony inbreed, which is a little bit weird, and I don't know if they actually inbred or not, so it would be an interesting thing to see how they do. These guys are rarely kept, so there's a lot unknown about their, you know, nesting behaviors, biology, you know, like, all that stuff is really unknown, so I really hope to actually get these colonies big and see exactly where it takes us. I don't know if you'll see these colonies very often, to be honest, uh, maybe like once every month or once every two months. These are incredibly boring ants to keep, as far as I know. They're pretty much just Temnothorax. If anything, they're actually a little worse than Temnothorax, because they don't get as big of colonies. So yeah, I don't really know if you guys want me to update you like on separate videos, completely dedicated to them, or if I should go ahead and just throw them in with the other test tube colonies and whatnot. Eventually, I think they might eventually get big enough for me to actually put them inside of a their own like dedicated nest. Maybe I'll make their own dedicated like formicarium. Actually, that would be kind of cool to do. 
But these guys are pretty much just like somewhat lamer Temnothorax because at least Temnothorax get better colonies or bigger colonies. So yeah, uh, let me know your thoughts on the species. Uh, I would really actually love to hear what you guys think about the species and um, how I should probably proceed with keeping these ants. Uh, so yeah, I guess that is going to be the end of the video. Uh, like the video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, subscribe if you're new, check out the Instagram, Patreon, check out the uh, Ant Keeping Anthology Discord server, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.